There we go. Whoa, <laughs> it's Transformation Tuesday. Whoa, and it's the first Transformation Tuesday of 2021. Yay. Yay, right? Yay. So what just happened in 2020? Oh, yes. And one of the cel celebrations I want to celebrate um, 2020 is we now have 610 members in Paradigm Shifters from 26 countries. Wow. And at Paradigm Shifters, we are dedicated to uplifting the world right where we are not by shying away from what's going on, but by looking straight in the face and coming up with strategies, implementations, and, and all that other fun stuff. So it's uh, my pleasure, my, my great pleasure uh, to bring to you one of my superheroes. My theme for January, personal theme for January, is honoring the superheroes. And um, a really great friend of mine from um, Canada mentioned to me that, you know, there's so many statistics now. People who have left in their statistics and each one of those people is a real person and has left a legacy. So with that, I kept thinking and Kelly, I'm like who could talk about legacy, you know, this and that. And Kelly's got quite a story. And I want to tell you about Kelly's legacy right now with me. How's that for you? Why like, Kelly is a superhero to me. When I first met Kelly, she was belting her heart out at Unity Church of the Hills. And I'm like, wow, I, want, I wonder if, I wonder if I could do that, you know? And you know, Kelly, every place you go, Kelly has been an inspiration, not only to everybody who's ever heard her sing. Do I hear an amen? Amen, right, John? <laughs> it's just, she encourages you to sing especially if people told you you can't sing when you were little. Yeah, and so let me tell you a little bit about Kelly's background. I'm gonna turn this over. Um, I, I got this straight from your profile page. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly is married to the one and only Frank Galover. <laughs> yeah, she went to Miami Norland Senior High School. Then after that, she studied Batch and got her Bachelor of Music Education at Howard University. That's right. And after that, <laughs> she has a Master of Arts at Eastman School of Music. And after that, and I think currently, you studied educational leadership and principal certification at Texas State University. You taught music in the elementary school. Just up until currently, right, Kelly? Yep, just up until September when I got my current position, but I, I guess you're gonna talk about that next. So I won't interrupt. No, I, I, well, I, yeah, and go ahead, tell us what you're doing now. And then, yeah, let's just take it away. Okay. Um, so right now I'm, I'm in school full-time um, at Texas State University working on my PhD in school improvement. And I'm a doctoral research assistant at, at Texas State. I work for two different professors and um, I'm loving my life, loving my life. Yes, yeah. Well, you know, so what I would, would love to have you come in and um, talk to us about the last month and I know you went from the and so can you, can I take it away and talk about, you know, the gift of legacy and your parents, how's that? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, December 15th, my mother passed away this, um, three weeks ago today. And then three days later, my father passed away and, um, my parents, 
I'm not going to even say were because their their spirit lives on. My parents are giants. They, they are huge lights in this universe. Um, my mother was my first spiritual teacher. She grew up in, um, she was born in the 1930s, a sharecropper's daughter um, in Arkansas, Magnolia, Arkansas is where she's from originally. <laughs> and um, she grew up in, with a very traditional background, but um, she never believed that there was only one path to God. And so as a result, she taught all of us that God lives inside of us and in everything. And so I was not raised, even though we did end up going to church um, later on in my life, you know, I grew up um, a little later in life, Presbyterian, and then I ended up going to a unity church as, as a teenager um, because my mother never, never b believed that there was only one, one path to God and she did not want me to become indoctrinated. And I think that that really helped me to be the, the open person um, to, to not close myself off to people if they are gay or non-binary, um, they're black, white, Asian, wh wh whatever. Um, she, she raised us to believe that God is in everyone and in everything and um, not to use um, Christianity as a way to other people. And my father, on the other hand, even though he, he grew up the, the same way, he, he's originally from Louisiana. He was born in 1934, also a sharecropper's um, son. Um, he, even though his father only had, a, I think it was an eighth grade education, he went on to get his PhD and he was a community college president. And he, um, he did so much in the community. He owned, um, he was part owner of a black bank in, in Miami. He um, started um, an organization called, called um, Tools for Change in Miami that, that gave um, people of color um, tools to have their own businesses to become entrepreneurs. Um, and on his first college campus, he was the first black president of Miami-Dade Community College, um, the North Campus, and he, started all of these programs to help people in the community, no matter what, what their background was. But he, he definitely was, was a champion for people of color to try to get them um, the, the, the same kinds of chances that um, non-people of color get. But he, again, he never discriminated against people. He always helped people who, who were in need. Um, and he really inspired me to, to be the educator that, that I am. Um, and my, my parents adopted four children when, when I was 20, I'm the youngest of four. And when I was 20 years old, um, my parents adopted four kids and my, my cousins lived with us for a while. So they, they were always the, the people there to uplift the community. And the, the reason they adopted four children, um, is because they, they saw an opportunity to make a difference in children's lives and to help instill in them um, love and, and light so that they could pass that on to other people because they knew if, that if they didn't get them out of the foster system that they might end up another statistic. So my parents are very loving big spirits and I can only be so sad because I got, they were my, parents until they were in their 80s and up until the very end they they were always open and loving and giving to to everyone so i'm i'm really grateful for them mm. yeah yeah so i love the fact that you um that you have the courage to um continue the legacy and I think if you were to um, pick one or two qualities that you um, were watching that you are using right now, what would they be that you um, receive from them? I say the biggest thing right now that I'm going through right now without getting into too much detail is that even when you see a lot of darkness that a person is doing 
it's important not to demonize that person because that is not them. That is not the nature of them. And to see them for who they really are. And if you wanna transform that energy, you need to speak into existence who they really are instead of talking about them negatively to try to shift that situation so that that person can grow and, and move beyond where they are now. Even if they choose not to, it, it, won't, it wouldn't be because you demonized them and put them down and treated them the same way that they may have treated you. To always, as, as Michelle Obama said, when other people go low, you go high. So I'm in a situation like that right now. And just this, this morning, yesterday, just about every day, I chant that, that person's full name. And I constantly say the God in me loves the God in you and the God in you loves the God in me. And I, I see you for who you, you really are and you are a light of God, no matter what the outward appearance is. So yeah, that, that's the gift. That's the biggest gift that my parents gave me and, and my siblings that, yeah, I always see the good in people, no, no matter what the outer appearances are. I, I think, I think Re Reverend Beckwith, was talking about like when people are acting out, it's, it's a call to prayer. So yeah, it's, and just view those people as master teachers. So my current situation that I'm in now, that person is, is a master teacher for us in our family during this difficult time. And it's up to us to learn, learn, learn those lessons that our parents taught us and that um, th those universal truths that, that, that we all learn about. Now is the time to put them into action. There, there you go. You know, I, I also know a little bit about, you know, your caretaking because you, <laughs> you were in school while you were caretaking your parents. Yes. Yeah. Um, How I was that? Know. Were there some funny <laughs> moments? I mean, because your parents were educators, or your father, and was it? And all of a sudden, you're on Zoom, right? You tell us about how 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 you made it through that and the new way of schooling, you know? Yeah, at, at first when I was um, teaching at, at, at my school, um, every, everything was, was virtual. Um, then we, we did go in for a little bit, but I ended up getting my job as a research assistant. So everything was online. So all of my classes were online, all of my meetings with my professors that I work for were online. And so when my mom got really sick, I was able to pick up and go be with them for for weeks at at a time so i was still able to have my classes at night be in the hospital all day with my mom um when, when i needed to be and um come home with my dad because both of my parents were on hospital well my dad was on hospice and then towards the very end my mom was too but um yeah it gave me time to to be with with them to help the the caregivers that were living with my parents that, that I could give them them a break and and help with, with my parents. So that that was kind of a strange blessing in this pandemic because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to leave. And I and and actually I wouldn't have gotten this research assistantship job if it weren't for the pandemic be, be, because because of the pandemic, someone had to leave the the research, the doctoral research assistantship position. Um, after the school year started. And I'm like, I really did want to apply for that, but I was going to wait until the second year of my doctoral studies to do it. And when that opportunity came, I, I, I'd even said over the summer, man, I wish that I'd applied for that job because that, that would have been the perfect job to, to have during this time. And I'm like, maybe something will open up. Maybe somebody won't be able to get that, won't be able to keep that position because of the pandemic and, and it'll open up. And sure enough, <laughs> About three weeks after I said that, it, it opened up. So um, I wouldn't have been able to do this if I, if I were still in my school district. I would not have been able to spend weeks at a time, like three weeks and four weeks at, at, at my parents' house because I, I would have missed too much school. So everything happens for a reason. Everything is in divine order. What a gift, what a gift. And what a gift for them to have you there and also a gift for you to see, um, to pour that love. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, well, I never, I never thought that I would be saying this, but seeing my parents actively dying was a blessing. 
Well, tell me more. That's what I really would love to hear more. Um, it, so, so the hospice workers explain to us what, what it looks like when people are actively dying. Um, and I, and I kind of knew because I, I helped, um, with, with caregiving with my, with my in-laws as well. My, my husband lost both of his parents, um, in 2015 and 2018. And so we were, we, we helped with them, but they lived in town. So I knew a lot of the signs, but um, the hospice care workers would, would tell us d different things because of course we, we, were, we were there most, most of the time, the hospice care workers just came in for a little bit of time during the day, but especially at nighttime, it, it was on us. So they told us what to look out for and how to keep them comfortable. And I got to sing um, to them and, um, just love on them, help help bathe them, kiss them constantly, and tell them how, how much we we love them. Um, I let I let my dad know that that it was okay to 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 move to move on because I felt like even though he before he died he 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 was ready to go. I mean he he let us know that he that he didn't want to live anymore because he said I've done everything. I'm I'm ready to go. Um, but I think I, I felt like he was holding on. Um, he 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 went into a, a coma. The he had a stroke on the day that my mom died. So he we never even got a chance to tell him that that my mother passed. But we we think he spiritually knew because he started to spiral the 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 day that my mom went unconscious. But all of that time being having in home hospice gave us all of us. Um, my sister was there. My um, my nephew was there. Um, my one of my little brothers was there. We all got a chance to spend time with them even before you know that they went unconscious and just let them. We we just got to love on them so much. It was a lot of quality time, um, and even seeing them after they they passed. I never thought that I would be able to handle that, but it it was great closure. I'd, I'd never been the type of person, but my whole family were all into the cremation thing because we never wanted to be, um, we never wanted to see people um, lying in a casket because we always like that that's their shell, that that's not them. But um, yeah, I, that, that was, it just felt like a gift. And, and the hospice care workers told us that a lot of people feel like um, hospice care, like in-home hospice care is, is a blessing. And it, it was a beautiful experience. It, it, it really was. Wow, well, thank you so much for that. You know, um, because that's part of your story now, you know? Yeah. And every single person here in Impaired Arm Sisters has a story to tell of, any, you know, it could be a tragedy, it could be a comedy, but everybody's story is important. And, and to share your story and to share your history is um, such a gift. And I don't know, I don't know, Kelly, but it seems to me that the more stories we hear and the stories we share, the more we can make it through. Do you, do you get that? Do you? Yeah, sharing stories with 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 people, um, it helps me to see how connected we are. Because I I never would have known in, in talking to some of my friends about about this experience that some of them experience the same thing, and it helps you to see how how connected we are. And also, it also helped me to feel not so crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I've had I have bouts of grief where I like ugly cry and everything. But um, for the most part, I feel at peace with it. And I went for a few days without crying at all. Um, the day, um, so my father died on the 18th and I, December 18th, and I didn't cry again for like maybe about uh, almost a week after that. And I was talking to one of my friends saying, I'm getting worried about myself. Why am I not, why am I not crying? I still feel a lot of gratitude and peace. Um, and she was just saying, well, you are going through a lot, you know, getting all the paperwork and all the legalities and everything. Um, and then when I was talking to another friend about it, um, she said, well, remember, so her, 
another friend, her mother just, just passed away. Um, I think it was the end of the beginning of November. And, and her, we would compare notes all the time because my mom had dementia, my father had Alzheimer's. And so we were going through the same kinds of experiences about um, slowly saying goodbye to pieces of our parents. And so um, when people say, oh gosh, this must be so devastating to you. I've, I've been grieving the loss of my parents, the, the people who they were, I, I lost them a long time ago. And that, that's, that's one of the things that one of my, that the friend who lost her mom in November um, to dementia, she was, she said, I felt the same thing. She said, it's, it was a long, it was an anticipatory grief. You just lost pieces of your parents. Each time we saw them, each time we talked to them on the phone, just pieces of them just went away. So by the time that they left, like my, my parents stopped calling because they, they stopped being as verbal. Um, yeah, so it wasn't a shock. My, yeah. my, my, the essence of, of my parents left a long time ago. So my grief has been Special. long, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, thank, thank you so much for, for coming on and doing that. And one of the things that I know too about you is music's been a really important part of your life. And um, there's that gift of music um, as you go through things. Were there any um, musical moments? You said you sang to your, um, your parents. Is there something you can tell us about that? And then I wanted to uh, wrap yeah. up one more question. Because I know one thing I know is, is um, when I, when I, you know, when I hear the world were a uh, fan, unbelievable, touching musical thing, I think of Kelly Glover and the <laughs> passion you have with your voice. So uh, could you tell us maybe some of the, um, your favorite, musics that you you know you and your folks shared if if that's okay yeah um there was one moment that i will never forget um and i'll give just a tad bit of background um my my father um he always wanted me to be like a doctor or something because I, I have a brother who passed away a long time ago and he was a pediatrician and so he wanted you know he wanted another doctor in the family and so he was waiting for me to no longer major in music so <laughs> so when i was working uh, applying for my master's he's like man when are you going to give this music thing up what more is there to life than do re mi fa so la ti do and then that ended up helping me to that gave me the push to start a music education company that that was all about Solfege do re mi fa so la ti do. Like he, he inspired that because I wanted other people to know, you know, all the different careers you can have in music and how to sightseeing music, all that kind of stuff. So my father, as his Alzheimer's progressed, he started becoming more musical. Not that he didn't sing or anything before, but he just didn't do it a lot. He, it's like he didn't appreciate the power of music before, but there, there was a time, um, I think it was last Thanksgiving, I think it was last Thanksgiving, he started drumming on the mattress. And then we just had an improvisatory drumming session together. And I'm like, who is this man? This is not the man I grew up with. I mean, uh, Alzheimer's changed him in a really cool way. And then uh, a few days before um, my father transitioned, he, he was laying in the bed and he started singing a song. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what, what is that? He said, that's an old spiritual. And I'm like, sing it again, teach it to me. And so I, I, I videotaped the whole thing. And so I have him on video singing this song. It, it was, he sounded great. And then I found the song on YouTube um, because I, I'd never heard the song before. And I can't think of the name of the song now, but um, I found it on, on YouTube and I played it back to him. And he was like, that's the song I was just singing. I'm like, yes, that, that's the song that you were just singing. And so he was watching it on, on, on YouTube. But I treasured that that moment that my dad, the person who never really wanted me to be in the arts, he got so artistic towards the end. Cause my mom, she was the artistic, dramatic singer. You know, she instilled the love of music in us. But towards the end, he he 
he would just break out spontaneously in song all the time. So I have all of these um, videotapes of my dad um, singing spirituals. So I will, I, I've, I've saved all of them. I'm saving them to a Google Drive. I've saved a few of them, but yeah. That just precious, just precious. And oh. I thought it made me sad to see those videos and to hear them, but it, it brings me joy. It's so precious. So what I would like to end this with is, well, first of all, what a powerful story you have, you know, and, and a powerful story that um, maybe give other people the permission to talk their stories. And what I want to ask you is like, as paradigm shifters, what I love to do is, what is it, you know, thank you for the gift of, of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Hero, superhero Kelly, you know, and one of my friends said, you know, if he was going to be a superhero, he'd be Batman because Batman is human underneath it all, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I like that. Yeah, yeah, we're all superheroes, like sometimes. And, almost, and then it, we're all human. We are so human. So what we like to end is, um, you know, we're this community of uplifters and huggers. We can't hug anymore. Oh. And what would you love for us to hold for you, Kelly Glover? What would you love? And we're gonna hold it in for you. What would you love? I would love for any any deep wounds, any family pathology that, that, that is going on, I would like for it to all shift with peace, ease, and grace, and that everyone who needs to be spiritually and emotionally and physically healed in my family and in the world, that this is the year 2021 of a grand transformation of healing, of peace, of grace and seeing everyone in my family and, and everyone in the world, because we are one big family. We are all one with God um, that, that everyone sees the God in each other and that, and that we, live, we live that way, that, that we honor, that we see and honor the God in each other, starting here, starting now shift happens and it's happening now. Yes. I see the God in all of you. And so it is. Let's get some energy going here. All right. And so yeah. it is. <laughs> I love it, right? Yes, yeah, so it is. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. And um, I know I'll put this on YouTube, put it out there and, you know, reach out to each other, people and comment and and connect is and um we we are making it we will make it it's already made and so it is wow thank you so much thank you 